So how are you going, guys? Good lunch? All right, we're on the home stretch this afternoon. All right, welcome to my talk on online courses. Uh, I notice it's from the trenches. Now, what, what that means is I'm not standing up here talking as an expert. I'm in the middle of this. I've been um, exploring online course options for about a year and a half now, and I wanted to share some of my mistakes and some things I've learned along the way, and hopefully um, it will help people if you're actually considering uh, doing a course. Now, who's thought about making an online course? All right, you're in the right place. Who, who's, who's made an online course? Get out. You can go upstairs and do lightning karaoke. You don't really need to be. Um, look, it's, it's a really interesting area, and it's a vastly growing, really quickly area, um, and there's so much involved with it, and I thought it would be really useful to try and put still everything I've sort of learned in the last year and a half for, for people that are thinking about doing it. All right, so um, actually I might start off by saying I am not a real developer. I think if anyone was in the talk here before lunch we talked about imposter syndrome and that's been kicking in all lunchtime. I just thought I'd get that out of the way. I'm actually not a developer at all. I'm, I'm a photographer, I'm a photography teacher and I'm a WordPress producer or a web designer. I like Oh, I've never really been comfortable with any of the terms, but I don't call myself a developer because out of respect to the developers in the room, the ones that can actually code and stuff, I'm pretty lousy at code, so I make sure I don't call myself that. But I'm a, um, a jack of all trades or a, um, what do you call it, an autodidact, whatever you want to call me, you know, like depending on how nice you want to be to me. I, I have, I'm not a specialist, that's what I'm not. I've always been interested in a whole wide variety of topics and I always dig into new projects, which has so stopped me from specialising, but it's given me a very broad set of skills, which has been very useful in my um, business uh, making websites. One of my current projects is for my photography teaching. As I said, I, I've taught photography in TAFE for about five years until Campbell Newman had his way with me. And since then, I've started up my own uh, photography teaching business. And one of the problems with teaching photography up on the Sunshine Coast is you've got a limited number of people in a geographical area, and it's really hard to get those marketing wheels to get the numbers. So I thought, I want to go online with this. I've been teaching for 10 years. I know what I'm talking about. I, you know, I've got to generate the content, but I, I need to get out there. So I thought, let's do an online course. And uh, obviously, what the rest of what I want to present today is sort of my journey along that road and, and some of the really mistakes I've made and some of the really cool things I've learned about what's important. All right, so um, there's my two websites. Photographic is my uh, web design website and I teach photographers is a pretty cool domain name if I think so myself, but yeah, it, it says exactly what it does. All right, so why do I have anything to say at WordCamp? Well, I'm, I'm highly qualified mostly because of this. That's, that, that's really all you need to get up here and, and give a talk. You know? it's, it's not about experts. Now, um, although I've been involved in web design for a long time, probably longer than some of the youngest people in the room, I made my first website in 1995 uh, with something called Front Page, I think it was called back then. <laughs> it's almost embarrassing, but there you go. A few years later, I graduated to Dreamweaver, back when it was owned by Macromedia. Um, at the height of my developer career, I actually hand-coded a website in HTML and CSS in Notepad. I was really proud of that. And that was when I did at 3 in IT, and um, one of the things I learned in that is that I'm not a developer and I'm never going to be. I, I had a mate right next to me and his code was beautiful, you know, poetry almost, and mine was lousy. But his website was really ordinary and mine was really nice. And so I realised, hey, there's a, there's a whole bunch of different skills that people can have when building websites, and being a developer is not the only one. So it made me feel good about that. And I've got a really, because I'm a photographer, I've got a really good visual sense, and uh, I've got a writing degree, so I'm good with copy. Uh, and I've been tinkering with WordPress for, you know, I got into WordPress in 2004, so yeah, pretty early on, and I've been building sites ever since. And now these days I have a reasonably successful, probably 60-70% of my income comes from building sites for small and micro businesses up on the Sunshine Coast, but also some international clients and maintenance plans, that sort of thing. Um, the rest of it's photography teaching and photography jobs. All right, I, I really love the fact that when I'm building a website, I'm often combining all my skills, my 
photography, even if I'm not taking the shots, I'm, you know, I'm selecting them in a stock library or um, the, the visual side of things. Like I said, I write the copy or I edit the copy. Uh, I've got the design sense and my WordPress skills. I always wanted to add teaching in, to that, and so I think making an online course adds my, the teaching element into it as well. So I'll be using absolutely everything, and then I'll be teaching photography, which I just think you know, I couldn't get any better. I'm pretty much using everything that I'm good at. So that's, that's what's really attracted me to making an online course. Um, now, I wanna, I've got a little indulgence slide here because it's not very often you get to talk to 200 or 100 and whatever other WordPress fanatics. So just, and it follows on from that previous talk we had about uh, imposter syndrome. Um, I thought about what, what, what do I find most interesting about WordPress and I thought really one of the, the best things that I like about WordPress is the diversity of the user base. It's often split up into this binary of user and developer. And I find that useless, to be honest. I think there's so many different types of people using WordPress, like right from uh, yeah, developers, we've got designers, entrepreneurs, consultants, beginners, business end users. And it was, I thought it was interesting to think of that everyone's WordPress experience is completely different to everyone else's. You know, how, how a developer, what their back end looks like and what they do with WordPress is completely different to what I do with it and, and completely different to what ever, anyone else does. So I think, from a software perspective, what a success story that is. WordPress is just amazing in, it, in that it can cater to such a broad user base. The other thing I obviously really love about it is the breadth of application. Like, what can you not do with WordPress? Like, you can make anything. And, and online courses are a case in point that um, there are lots of options, but there, it's, WordPress is certainly a good platform for that. All right, so why would you want to make a course in the first place? I think it's you obviously have to have um, the right mindset, like why are you doing it? Oh, hopefully not just for money. I, I think to think of your motivation is an important thing and um, you have to have something to say or something to teach to the world. I think that, that's an imperative. You actually have to really want to hurt, get your voice heard. Uh, I, I think you really want to have to want to in, uh, enrich people's lives. It, to me, it's more about the giving aspect than the receiving. I've found that personally in my um, photography teaching. I get an enormous buzz out of teaching people photography and watching them go from rank beginners that don't know what to do with their camera to four weeks later or, and a bit longer, and they find that, wow, they're really getting good photos, and it's, it's really enriching, and that, that is one of the most rewarding things I find about teaching. It, th obviously, the paycheck helps, but that's not why I'm in it. I, I, I really love... Uh, sharing knowledge and seeing people grow. So that's, one, that's my motivation for uh, doing an online course, apart from the, you know, the basic one of get lots of clients and earn lots of money. Um, now what about if you think you know, the course that I want to do, well it's already out there. Well yeah, think of photography, you know, creative live anyone? Like there are already thousands or hundreds if not thousands of websites offering whatever you want to offer. Doesn't really matter what it is you thinking of teaching, it's already out there. But the thing is, you shouldn't let that stop you. you know, that's, you've just got to get out there and do it better than anyone else. I've had a good look at some of the photography courses online, and to be honest, there's a lot of them that are really ordinary, that are stuck in te you know, technology that's 10 years old, and they're not really implementing it very well, and sometimes even the knowledge is not so good. So luckily I've had quite a few clients that have bought courses online and they've given me access and I've been able to go and evaluate specific courses and go, oh, well, no, I thought they were really good and they're very popular and they're making lots of money, but that's hopeless. So I think if I can get that reach, my course would be better than that. So I, I don't think the fact that there are courses out there should stop anybody because, you know, it's not 1993 anymore. The internet's full of everything. Um, obviously it's also nice some money. So I've got a few numbers here that um, might impress people. So there's a pretty big number. It's got a lot of zeros on the end of it. Uh, in this part of the world, that's 107 billion US dollars. Now that equates to um, the annual global spend on online learning in about two years ago. So that's a lot of money being spent on online learning. And to put it in perspective, here's another number which is roughly about a third of that first number. What do you think that is? That's no, the global box office. 
So that puts it in perspective pretty well, doesn't it? Like how popular online learning and courses and stuff are. If you want to put it in perspective the other way, um, say the market capitalization of Google or Apple or Microsoft, they're at the $400 billion mark. So four times the size of the entire online uh, area. But it's still an enormous um, amount of money. Now this one, this is fantastic. This represents total success. That's what that represents. Because if you can get 0.001% of the annual global spend, you're making um, $1.07 million a year. So that's pretty cool. So if you, even if you put an, a zero on it, we're talking about $107,000 a year. So if we go the other way and we could go 0.01%, you know, that would be $10 million. Obviously 0.1 would be 107, 1% would be a billion, 10% would be billion. So look, it's a, there's a huge market out there and you don't really need a big percentage of it to be doing pretty well in this, in this area. So um, as um, Donna J. Abernathy wrote, it's probably 15 minutes of fame in this world, but I thought it was a great quote, online learning is not the next thing, it's the now big thing. It's really happening and it's going super fast. Like I said, those stats were from 2015. I'm sure they have increased enormously since then. All right, so let's look at content. Um, not many people make content this way anymore. But the key to content, obviously you have to, like I said, you have to have something to say and then you have to create your content. But how do you, what do you do with your content? How do you make a decent course? Like we, in the early days, course was just a bunch of videos on YouTube or a bunch of PDFs or you know, really basic way of delivery. But these days we've stepped up a lot with online courses and you really need to lift your game. So structure is the key to um, your course material. Um, I think a framework is sort of the way to deliver your content is the way to go. There's, obviously there's different ways to do this, but are there any rock stars in the room? Okay, you guys can go too. You know what this is all about. <laughs> so Rockstar Empires is an online course for creating online courses. A bit meta, but their framework's pretty good and it's a six by six framework and it's a very good starting point. Now it might not match exactly what you're trying to do. I, I mapped it to my existing photography course and I thought, yeah, it works pretty well. I had to tweak things a little bit. I do four weeks in a photography course, um, which works out about 12 hours. Uh, this would work for me to be about nine hours. So uh, it, it's doable. But it's a, the six by six framework means six modules. And I, the way I like to do it, or I'm planning to do my online course is drip fed one module a week. So it's a, a course over six weeks, which is a doable time frame. It's not just going out forever, but it's not 12 weeks or something that's hard to commit to. I think it's a good time frame of six weeks. And you get a week to do each module, so there's not a lot of pressure to do the individual units during that week. You don't need a lot of time. So you've got six modules with six lessons in each module. So that makes up the 36 lessons that would be in your course. And obviously that's a flexible number, but it's a really good starting point to start to design a course and shoehorn your content into that sort of structure. Um, now the lessons themselves, they, again, they can be any length, but you know what we've all heard already about people's attention span being about seven seconds, so 15 minutes is a big ask. I think it's a pity, like I'm a writer and I, I have a attention span of an hour. I can sit there and look at something, no problem, but 15, 10 to 15 minutes is a good period of time for a, a unit that people will um, be focused enough to complete it and, and to get through it. Anything longer, they'll, they'll start checking their Facebook or their emails while they're doing it and you'll lose their attention. So basically they're quick enough to finish, but they're also long enough to teach something. So that, that would be the starting point, which I've already done with my stuff, was write the content and then figure out how to, how to structure it into this sort of uh, setup so that it, I can deliver it in a, a structured, useful way. As media goes, and um, what sort of elements do you need? Well, text-based documents, like, yeah, we'll all fall asleep with that. We know, yeah, we're way past that. It's 2017. Obviously, um, video is king in, in 2017, and... But not just video, you know, like otherwise you could just do a bunch of videos on YouTube. And that's not really an online course, that's just a bunch of videos on YouTube. So the videos should be the basis of a course. I think nearly everyone's doing video. I don't know, I haven't 
online courses that are not embracing video that are current and recent. There's still ones online that, are, that, are, that didn't get there yet, but video is definitely the way to go. But you need a whole range of different content these days to engage people. I, I think well-designed graphic visual elements, like you know, really well-designed PDFs, have got a great role to play because they they can support video well. Like you don't want to watch a video again. You don't get as much out of a video the second time round. It's a great medium to watch. But I, I don't know about you, I've watched a lot of videos the second time around, I'd hardly pay attention to it at all. Whereas a PDF, I can go back in and I can look and go, oh, yeah, okay, a bit of revision, yep, we followed all that, and it it's, uh, sticks a bit better. So obviously there's different ways of learning. Some are visual, some are kinesthetic, some are readers. So I think you have to try and um, cater to everybody if possible. Uh, other things you can do is audio, you know, is a really good way if you can strip the audio from your videos and provide MP3, people can put it on their phones, listen to it on the way to work. They might, oh, yeah, yeah, also, yeah, you might want to download them and watch them on the way to and from or wherever you've got a chance. You might want to listen to the video while you're going to sleep, like an audio book. Um, so there's a place for that. Transcriptions can be handy if people want to read rather than watch the video again. They might want to scan through and find something, what you talked about, rather than having to watch the whole video again. Uh, quizzes and other sort of... Um, Gamification elements, are, I think they're really important and they're mostly to do with uh, completion rates. And we'll talk more about that, but it's no good having an online course if people don't finish the course. And the gamification element can be incredibly um, valuable in a course. Like in the recent course I did, Rockstar Empires, the, I love the gamification side of it. I actually got to the top of the leaderboard because I, I was constantly trying to score points and it was a motivating factor. It wasn't so much to to get to the top, that wasn't what it was about for me, but I used it to self-motivate, to make sure I did the modules and uh, ask questions on the Facebook group and anything else that got me points because it kept me engaged and motivated. And I realised the value of that as it worked on me. I was sort of watching myself and going, wow, this is really working. I didn't think I'd be into that. Like, badges are not so exciting, but I love the points table and the competition. I must be just very competitive by nature, but it really worked on me. And I think that's a, a, va a valuable um, part of the, um, the whole thing. Curated links are really good, obviously. You can always refer to other content. There's so many resources on, online, it's not just your own. Uh, webinars and coaching calls have become a big part of it to have that community engagement during a course. So once a week, maybe a, a webinar, uh, coaching call to keep everyone there. That's one of the big oppositions I have to a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to do an online photography course, I really want it in person. But we got to the point now with a, like a Zoom webinar, it's like being in person. You don't, you don't feel like you're left out at all. And there's a lot of different um, elements you can use to gather community around. So your content should be engaging, entertaining and versatile. That's the main thing. So then we need one of these, which is of course a platform. Now, we can do an all-in-one platform. If you want the easiest route to an online course, grab one of these, Udemy over 45,000 courses, 15 million users, but yet a completion rate of 5% on average. That's woeful. How many people have bought a Udemy course and not finished it? Right, I've got about three or four of them that I haven't bothered to finish. There's no, not enough incentive for a start. The price is too low and there's no engagement and it's, yeah, it's a bad way of making courses. Uh, Thinkific, Teachable, Kajabi, Rizuku, Academy of Mind. There is a lot of different platforms, all in one platform, that um, allow you to just create content and you upload it and take care of the marketing and the structure. That's the easiest and quickest way in. If you want a proof of concept, just maybe put a course up on one of these platforms and see if it goes. Because obviously the next step would be to the do it yourself route which uh, in this case is a little stick insect that walks around and stuff, but um, as you know, this represents in all its multiple parts. Now, putting it together yourself is a lot harder than just putting it up online on an all-in-one platform, but a lot more rewarding, and obviously you have total control over it, so that's the, the big bonus there. Now, when it comes to WordPress, if we use WordPress as a platform, you have a couple of choices to start off with. The blue pill or the blue pill. I always like the blue pill myself, and that would be... Um, actually going with an LMS theme, a learning management system theme, or just going the plug-in route. Now, I haven't got the, some popular themes and plugins listed up there because I didn't have time to check their GPL compliance, so they're actually on the notes. If you want to download the notes, there's a few lists of the most popular ones out there. But, and I'm not going to make 
the specific themes and plugins, particularly because it, it depends on what you're trying to do as to which ones are the most suitable. Um, but there are a lot of other parts needed apart from just, you know, an LMS plugin. You, you've got to think of it like an ecosystem. Like I might use LearnDash is where I'm leaning to now with my plugin. Uh, theme, it doesn't really matter what theme you use, some will be more suitable than others. Obviously, you've just got to find one that works for you. You've got a, a membership component, you need some sort of membership plugin to control that. It might be WooCommerce membership, Memberium, there's a lot of different choices in that uh, area. I think Chris Lemmer's got a lot of good posts on membership plugins and uh, online courses generally. He's really good with this stuff. Uh, gamification elements, there's some plugins and stuff that you need. For there to do with Buddy Press and Buddy Boss, they have a lot of you know the badges and the, the quizzes and all that sort of stuff. Although there's quizzes built into Learn Dash, um, you might have Facebook groups to use as a way of building community as well, both a public-facing one and a private one for your students. There's um, analytics you'll need. Obviously, you want Google Analytics for the site, but you might need Gritics, which is social analytics for your Facebook groups. Video hosting. You need a CRM, some sort of email, Active Campaign, Infusionsoft. You need sales pages. Now, you might use Thrive, Optimize, Beaver Builder. You might do it yourself. It doesn't really matter. You might need a support center, payment gateways, webinar, coaching software. As you can see, there are a lot of moving parts. So don't be too um, worried that shiny object syndrome will bite in here because there are a lot of different components. And it depends really what you want to put together. But if we, if we focus just on you know, WordPress and all the associated plugins, this is the danger. Yeah? It's just the delivery system. It's not the most important thing. It, it, it's, it, it just carries our message. There's also a lot more to it than that. Um, if you focus just on the delivery system, so what else do we need to think about when we make an online course? And that's not really a rhetorical question. What do we need? Um, we need an audience, obviously. right? Without you can build an online course, but without an audience, it's just going to sit there and make cricket noises in the background. And you know, build it and they will come just does not apply, as you know, anymore. So an essential part of building a course is having a strategy for creating an audience. So how do you get an audience? I'd like to know. You have to be good at something to start off with. That's absolutely critical. I don't think fake it till you make it with this one. You have to know your stuff or people are going to see through that very quickly. You have to define your audience. Now that's sort of avatar work. You know, really helpful to figure out who it is that's going to buy your course because uh, in that way you'll be able to focus it straight down to you know, who to put your marketing to. Now I've got to get a hurry on I can see. Um, you've got to position yourself as an expert. There's a lot of hard work in that. There's all sorts of things with you know, do blog posts, podcasts, public speaking is always good, Facebook Live, um, positioning yourself so that you're recognised in the thing. Then you've got to make, get content, start making yourself and helpful to people because that's one of the best ways to, to build trust with people is to help them with their problem. Define your audience, go to your audience and help, start helping them. A few examples of that during the, you know, the last few days, people were, were talking about that already. Um, so just content, content I think is really important to get yourself out there with uh, good content. And the idea of that, as I said, is to build authority, trust and likability and then people are much more likely to buy off you if, if you've already established that relationship with them. JV relationships, joint venture relationships can be really good once you're getting ready to launch, you know, get yourself out there to other audiences, um, things like guest blogging or... Uh, it's just more positioning, more leveraging of other people's audiences. And as long as it's a win for them and a win for you and a win for the audience, they'll get into it. There's, there's plenty of opportunities for future relationships. Even if you, you don't think so, you'd be surprised. You make some content, offer it to them, and they'll say, oh, and we'll share your post on our website. We've got thousands of viewers. So obviously you've got to do some brute force marketing at some point, maybe some Facebook advertising, and then leading up to your launch, um, which is a really important part of it, is, is the actual launch itself. It might be a series of webinars um, leading towards a, a release date. Now, I believe in sort of having a scarcity launch, like not just evergreen launch where it's always available, but maybe launch three or four times a year. 
and leading up to that because scarcity builds value for a course for sure. Now a couple of case studies, Kate, you might have seen her yesterday, she's got an excellent course that's been sold out already, but if you have a look at that sales page, fantastic example of a really good sales page that shows the, the real value she has. She's Another case study is WP Elevation, have we got any elevators in the room? We had a photo before, yeah there's a few of us here. Um, they, they built their course on Learn Dash and the Boss theme, uh, and you can see that snapshot of the member area, and it's a really good, well-structured, well-organised course, and I'm sort of building my first course based on this. Now, I, I think another our empires, as I said, which is Troy Dean's other online course for making online courses, which was a really great course. If you're interested in building an online course, I couldn't recommend this course enough. It was absolutely fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there are, obviously, there's lots of other categories. Marie Folio School is really up there as far as what she offers and how with a lot of customization. So there's where you can go with this. All right, let's quickly review because I'm running out of time. An idea, you have to have something to teach. You need to develop interesting, engaging content and structure it. you obviously got to choose platform, whether you go with an all-in-one or you do it yourself with WordPress or you hire a developer to get it done, you'll definitely need some CSS skills in that one. Um, all the support, the ecosystem around, it's not just the, the theme or the plugin, it's also those other bits we talked about. And then you've got to build an audience, that's got to be right in the heart, right from the start. You've got to have that in mind. If you don't have an audience, you're wasting your time, I believe. I think that's the most important thing. And a well-organized launch is very critical to getting that audience to actually turn them into, into customers. So this last, second last slide, I think it is, um, finally, like Colonel said, you need a secret source or a secret formula. Whatever it is, these dudes have got it in buckets. I just love that photo. I found I thought, what a photo. These guys are cool. They're the A-team. But what you need, you know, like, I think a scarcity launch really adds value to a course. I think you really have to know your audience and answer their problems. If, you don't, if you're not doing it for the specific problems that your audience have, if you're doing it for yourself, I don't think you'll succeed. You've really got to be helpful towards your audience. You've got to build community and you've got to be completion oriented. All the stuff in there, gamification, certificates, anything that will increase that completion rate is going to make your course more successful because then people will refer on to others and say, great course, you know, they actually finished it. So finishing it is just as important as actually selling it in the first place. So in summary, don't just build an online course, build a community. You've got to have the big picture. It's not just a, it's, it's not a course, it's the start of a community empire. So come back in six months and I'll have a photography one uh, getting started. So if anyone wants to learn photography, you know where to find me. Thanks very much. Um, you can find me there and if we've got any questions, we can do that. All right. Starting a course tonight. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, we've got some time. Okay. Let me off. Got there. And I'm pretty young. Obviously, you've got your online courses. What if there are these photos on the site? What if we get blended or hybrid delivery? Yeah, well, like I do face-to-face -face now, but obviously the problem with any sort of blended delivery, you're then you're limiting it geographically. So either for me, it's either local or it's online, because blended just creates a lot of problems. You could do something blended around Australia where you go on tour. So I've thought about that, but I think really just keeping it online and then maybe having events once a year. I'm, you know, I've, I've had all sorts of thoughts about, you know, maybe an annual photography event at a certain location. Obviously not going to get people travelling halfway around the world, but yeah, it is a di difficult one with blended delivery because of that. Yeah. Well, that's why I think it's really important to have that blended material in your course. That make sure that you're offering different ways to learn. You know, video, text, audio, everything. Because uh, I noticed that in TAFE, people do learn very differently. There's more of that. Yeah, sorry. Jess, so with the, when you say 10 to 15 minutes, is that so? So per per six of the six, 
Yeah, per unit. So a module would be like an hour and a half. So you sit down and watch 15 minutes. You might just do that once a day. Yeah? You might do one, one unit a day. But it, it's, it's a good doable amount over the course of a week. It's not a lot. I used to sit down two or three units at once and it only take me an hour and a couple of hours. You know? awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I, I think it's really important not to be with your knowledge. Um, I already teaching. I've had photography teachers that kept their secrets. I thought, wow, what sort of teacher are you that keeps the secret? I think you really need to be generous with your knowledge and show people what you've got to offer. You can't sort of bait it, deal it out a little bit at a time. Um, like one of the reasons I joined Troy Dean's because Troy Dean's just so generous with his and his information for free. I really saw that, and I thought, well, after I'd purchased from him, I thought, wow, this guy was just so generous. Imagine what he's got to offer if I'm going to give him some money. And he did. He, he delivered in the end as well. But I really took that to heart. I think you really have to be generous with your knowledge and not be afraid that you're giving something that there won't be a return on. Um, if you try and hold it back and try and get people in, they, they, they've got nothing to judge you on if you don't actually give them your content, give them a big part of it and show them that you can do what you're telling you to do. You have to build that trust and authority or they're not going to buy from you at all. So that, that's my take on it. I'm definitely going to be very generous with my knowledge. Oh, sorry. Oh, you've got the microphone already. Uh, thanks, Jeff. That was uh, very important. Uh, two questions. Yep. Uh, first, uh, accreditation. Uh, obviously, the short uh, term sort of courses would yeah, like I'm not accrediting. No, you, you, you obviously you need to go through a, an accredited, you know, supply. I, I'm just offering co certificate courses. Basically, they don't mean so much. It's the learning, but uh, cert certificates and cert three, cert four, they become less important, particularly in my field. In photography, a diploma doesn't mean anything. It's the skills that mean something. In some areas, it might be different. It might, might be much more important. You know, if you're a flight instructor, obviously you have to be certified, right? <laughs> but photographers, we get away with it. We, you know, there's no certification. You know, we're just out there and doing whatever we want. So the, a, a, I've done a diploma, but it really doesn't mean anything as a photographer. It's the skills. As long as you've got the skills, and that means it makes it easier to do a course because I don't need to worry about all that accreditation stuff. Fair enough. Yep. Uh, the other question was credibility. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I'm pretty much known. I'm, I'm on podcasting and blogging more and building JV relationships. I try everything. Obviously, you have to get that exposure somehow. You have to build up that audience. I've got a reasonable base. On Facebook, look if you, if you saw uh, was it Melanie's talk yesterday about the how she built up her Facebook platform with a with advertising, and that would be also part of my strategy to make sure that I've got at least a, a decent base before I kick off. How you do it is there's so many different ways to to get exposure and position yourself as a leader. I remember um, you know, Troy Dean's example was that he took two years to become the most helpful person to WordPress um, consultants. And so he spent two years helping people, and that really lifted his profile. Um, I, I called a guy in America who's got a, um, a, a top 20 influencer in the teaching world. He's got an online community in America of two something million people in his community. I just gave him a call I link, in LinkedIn, and I had a talk with him on the phone, and he said, you build your course, and if it's any good, I'll give you a plug. And I was like, oh my god, two and a half million people definitely want to, you know. So you just got to build relationships with people, and, and you got to deliver. Like, you know, if I don't have a good course, I'm not going to go near him. Well, okay, <laughs> awesome. Connect. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, I've thought of 
doing a sample course on, say, Teachable or Thinkific or something, just a, a sort of a proof of concept thing, but I'm a bit, it's not in my nature. Yeah. Yeah, well, I already put out sort of free stuff, uh, and but I have thought of making it a very small course, but it's not as useful with, with beginners, with photography, a little bit's not really enough. You need a fair bit to make it useful. So I'm sort of struggling with that. What I, what I will do is do little um, add-on courses and little free ones, sort of little extra bits, or, or really cheap courses, like you know, maybe mobile phone photography, just as a, a quick way to get people interested uh, for, for you know, $19 or something, and then they join up and they might go, oh, hang on, maybe I'll do the beginner's one and, and go a bit further. Um, so I think it's a good idea. For me, I just haven't quite figured out what to give away in terms of a course, a mini course. But I think you've got a good idea. I think giving away a mini course is a great idea. For what? Absolutely. Yeah, well, I do a lot of that already on Facebook and stuff. And, but giving away your knowledge is a big part of it.